week's Incredulous installment will feature commentary from comrades Scott, Joe, and myself. We begin with midterm results, chiefly the country's most consequential ballot questions such as the constitutionality of slavery, drug legalization and decriminalization, rights to abortion and reproductive health care, and the Massachusetts millionaire tax. We then dissect Elon Musk's financial blunders layer by layer, and fondly recall Jair Bolsonaro's blight now that Lula has been restored to his rightful place of power. The slams this week just might have a gizzard. Keep in mind we recorded this just one day after polls closed. Anyway, Zuck, Musk, Bankman Freed, these are the people that capitalism elevated to controlling some of the commanding heights of our economy, and all of them are either stupid as shit or engage in blatant fraud, or both. The- where like the bridge is and shit in a song no it's just because i have i have like a pathological aversion to redundancy so whenever i write music <laughs> like anytime i'm thinking like what should come next in the song my brain's like do the bridge do the fucking bridge dude because like i want to write the breakdown because it's like really easy to play and it feels really good to do it mm-hmm. but you need more than that in a song so i kind of have to force myself to do like the second verse and then the refrain again. You know what I mean? You probably don't because Joe, what are you taking pictures of? What the fuck is that noise? Exit polling that I'm going to talk. You're taking pictures. What are you doing? (laughs) No. So that like, I can like trying to like memorize this shit. Are you taking pictures though? It's a screenshot, right? Yeah. Screenshot. Yeah. Why does it make a noise? I don't know. (laughs) Okay. Perfect. So yeah, that's what we're talking about tonight, folks. Oh my god, my ear just got really itchy. It's because I have brain worms, as we all do. back. Yeah, it was like our first and second episode was called Brain Worms. I swear to god, my ear is so fu- I don't know why. Ow. It's like maybe our third episode. No. No, it was our first. Oh, wow. That's, that's throwback, before we had baby. 101. That was, that was the rawest, raw Episode is. 101 in episode one, sharing the connection of brain worms. I have them first episode was called brain worms look at that we've gone a full fucking circle full. from that raw dog into now uh, and that's circle, what we're talking baby. about folks both of us have gas at the same time that's what we're talking about folks so we're talking about gas we're talking about the midterm elections yeah, yeah like what said. a what a shit show what a, what a sexy topic what a woo yeah well that's an that wasn't <laughs> that's more appropriate so yeah, Joe, uh, we're going to start with a rundown of the uh, closest proximity races. So the Massachusetts prim- uh, midterms, I don't, I don't know why I almost said primaries there, but the Massachusetts midterm, let's talk about those races, what happened? What's I good, think it's probably bad? because you had a little bit of a Freudian slip because in all reality, in Massachusetts, the primary basically is the general. Yeah, okay. Keep going. Yes, we'll give Scott credit for the... Anyways, yeah. keep going. Right, so the most important thing. Maura Healy. Well, actually, yeah, this, Maura Healy is not the most important thing. I was actually thinking oh. about question one, but, you know, I got ahead of myself. Maura Healy wins the governorship in a landslide. That was kind of basically a predetermined outcome. I don't know why. Uh, this is something Evan George said last night to me that, like, I don't know why they're talking about it like it's actually a race. Like, we already know what's going to happen. What? You dropped something there, Joe. Uh, like the the, the <laughs> <No>. governor's race. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> no, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, but you dropped something there, Joe. I dropped what? Oh my fucking god! Anyways, you dropped a name. You dropped Mister oh. Bostopia News. See, Joe's trying to legitimize himself. He's got the inside track with Boston journalism's uh, the finger on the pulse, the I bleeding forgot. edge. My no, bad. Fine. We've had him on the show <laughs> yeah, before. We I'm kidding. Have, we we got to have joke. him back on. I feel uh, like he would have. I mean, he did a very good rundown. Yeah. We want to see some of that. Go watch shit on TikTok. Yeah. I'm gonna watch us. Go talk about it. But yeah, the the governor's talk race uh, wasn't really competitive. <laughs> Who was the Republican? 
Jeff Deal. Deal? Isn't he, wasn't he a guy who ran against Trump? Deal or no deal? No, he, he's, he is now, he is. Like a third party guy? Deep throating. Trump's platform. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. Well, good for him. Okay. Honestly, I don't know why Republicans even really try at this point. Well, who the fuck was our governor, dude? Well, I mean, that was largely because of uh, Martha Cook just being too lazy to campaign. And then, like, libs were like, oh, like, he's fine with abortion and he keeps our property values up. Okay, then. Yeah. I mean, he's indistinguishable from the third way Democrat. So, there, yeah, there's still this like bullshit of like people want to keep Massachusetts as this like like middle state Bast- of just like bastion of third we'll have democracy. like local elections can be very left, but like or local um whatever local politics can be very We're left, but be the governor the and the mayor have to be like either like fucking like centrist libs or like Republican. It's bullshit. It's this whole philosophy of the state that like. Needs to fucking die, basically, I think. so. Yeah, I I actually agree. Like, this idea of, like, oh, well, we need divided government to keep things in check. So, basically, we want nothing to ever happen. That's right, baby. (laughs) No, precisely. Not left. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. I have a secret third thing in the middle, baby. Let me show you it. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh. Oh, no. Come on. Come and take a look. So, but, like, Maura... I almost call her Maura Coakley. That's not a person who exists. (laughs) Maura Healy. Maura Coke. She sucks, Please. right? She's like she's like kind of progressive, but she sucks, right? Tell yeah. me why she sucks. She uh, keeps like trying to dance around the issue of like rent control, and mm, they all do. Yeah, she she's doing shit like that, or like trying to like avoid having to answer like questions about economics. Oh, you know, they all do. Just e- economics. Just economics in general. Like, what? How? What? How will the economics of Massachusetts be? And she's just like stares at the reporter, like just like. <laughs> It doesn't say anything? Like, what do you mean, Joe? She always, like, tries to punt back to cultural issues. When she's pressed about what, though, is what I'm asking. About, like, rent control or, like, the tea. Okay. Or, like, what are we going to do about the fact that, like, Massachusetts is one of the most expensive places to live in terms of housing. Yeah. And she'll go, like, deflect with something else It's like, kind of a non-issue. One of those types of libs. Okay. I get it. I get it. I get that type of bullshit lib. Okay. That's why I was very, like, uh at best ambivalent about Healy at the watch party last night. It's like, I, I'm not really excited. I'm not, like, upset. It's like, I'll believe it when I see it. It's claimed that, like, she's some kind of progressive. It's like, I'm not willing to buy that she's progressive until I actually see her do shit. That's fair. Certainly in this state. I liked the ad that her opposition made up for her. I thought it was great. It was, like, police stations burning to the ground. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, uh... <laughs> And she was like, well, sometimes you just got to burn it all down to make something better. And then it was like a voiceover that was like, Healy, really? <laughs> Hell yes, dude. That rules. Honestly, it's probably better than her own team could do, I think. You're probably, no, you're fucking right, yeah. No, you are. All of her ads, like, bored me to death. You actually watched political ads? No, because Jeff? I was trying to watch the no. World series and I'd come on. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, okay. That that's forgivable. That is forgivable. What's also really exhausting about living as close to New Hampshire as I do is like I'm trying to watch like Uh-oh. the Phillies lose. It's late at night and I'm getting blasted with like ads. It's not just how, like, you. Chris Pappas is like a radical communist is like I wish. Yeah, it's not just you. Because I, I don't know. I don't have TV. I do not have a TV. That's weird. TV like TV is not like an abstract concept. I don't own <laughs> I don't, you don't own a television, neither do I. I don't own a television. I don't have cable or whatever the fuck the newfangled thing people do now. <laughs> you say it's still it's, cable. All right, Most still cable. Yeah. But at work, I think they get Comcast, and they did have. There were more New Hampshire ads than there were local political ads. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of normal at this point, I think. Yeah, Joe. When you started saying that, it sounded like you were like, you know, it also. It's so tiring about living and then I thought you were just going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you were saying. Uh, Solidarity. New Hampshire, folks. He almost lives in there. No, you don't. How close is Lowell to New Hampshire, though? Only like a couple miles away. Yeah, okay. well, I guess that was my point. Boston is not as close. Yeah. Well, sometimes you get like the, the weird channels in between like the normal channels and it's like, oh, you hear see all these weird ads and say, you're right, though. It's like when you turn the channel up, like I remember when I used to get, I think, 70 channels. No, <laughs> less than that. But it would go like up to channel 70. I couldn't get the the next tier of channels 
but there would be like the ghost of like some softcore yeah. porn. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the cool. Yeah, no, that's a totally relatable experience. Yeah. But yeah, I, no. I was and when you I had find, fucking... you find the channels in between the channels where they have like the weird ads and shit. I had Adelphia. <laughs> I don't even think that exists anymore. It's where I watched the softcore porn film starring James Caan, Hit and Run. It's pretty famous. You should watch it. It's good, actually. No, it's not. Joe, what else happened in the election? So the most important thing that happened was uh, question one. It was also known as fair share. Wait, was there no other fucking races that we care about? In terms we'll get of like, into it. We'll do local. We'll do local. All right. Place. Okay. 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 Yeah. Question one. You stinking, rotten, filthy millionaires. Fuck you, losers. Yeah. Suck Scott's cock. Yep. <laughs> so question one, which is known as fair share, would yeah. establish a 4% tax on uh, incomes over a million dollars. And with the revenue being directed to income. education and transportation, this would be enshrined in the state constitution. And would only probably affect around approximately 20,000 people in the state anyways. Uh, and it passed 52% of 48. Wait, what, was the, what was that sound? I dropped it. Th- I'm holding my uh, earbud case and I dropped it. I thought, I, thought you, I thought you were like overcome with rage. <laughs> <laughs> Rage quit. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm one of the 20,000 and I'm very pissed. Yeah, it passed what? by about 90,000 votes. Good. Yeah, I do agree with the people that say that it was too close for comfort. It's just like, how the fuck does that many like people in the state get duped? It's really 1,105,238 people voted against it. Yeah, you're a bunch of fucking losers, guys. Like, you are, you know? Like, that's like, you're not getting, like, dude, like, come on. You're chasing a pipe dream. You're not going to become rich. You're doing the work of 20,000 assholes that just want to like exploit you at the end of the day. So like, come on, bro. We're fucking so. And it's, Look at the a four, it's 4%. That's not a lot. This is interesting. Well, the thing is, it is a lot because they have so much money. So 4% ends up being a lot of money. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. It's not a lot for them, but it's a lot for us. Well, that's what I'm saying. Good. It's not a lot for them. Yeah, and there was that article that's where the guy said, like, it's not actually going to be that big of a deal for me. What I'm saying by it's not a lot is, like, if you're already making more than a million dollars a year, like, 4% of a million dollars, you're probably not going to notice it. Yeah, your quality of life is not going to drastically decrease. That, that's what yeah, I'm no, saying. No, exactly. That's but what the guy said. And is, that's literally, poor, yeah. If you're poor, that 4% can be the difference between having a fucking place to live or not. Yeah, ex- yeah, precisely. Precisely, sir. Yeah, no, that's a big deal. Yeah. It's very good. Happy which kind of lends it. us to uh, question two, which was about, like, dental insurance regulation. Kind of leads us to question two. And that passed, <laughs> uh, question two is about, like, regulatory oversight of, like, dental insurance companies. Hold on. You just said that so fast that you could have said anything. <laughs> Requires dental insurers to submit medical loss ratios to state regulators and to refund excess premiums to customers if the annual medical loss ratio is less than 83 percent the loss ratio measures the amount spent on dental expenses and quality improvements what the fuck does that mean joe basically it means that they need to like stop overcharging okay (laughs) transparency and accountability and that passed by about a million votes Question two passed. Yes. Good. If you leave a necessary procedure to the free market, they're not going to make it fucking affordable. So this this prevents that from happening. Providers from taking a giant chunk off the top. Well, good. In theory, they'll probably find a way to be able to hide some of the costs. Well, it wouldn't be corrupt, corrupt motherfuckers if they didn't try. They didn't try. What happened with question three? Uh, it failed. Yeah. Some websites say it passed and some say it failed, which is funny to me. It did not pass. What was it? It was like 46 to 53. No. Oh, what was the question? It was basically about like liquor license distribution. Basically, it was like about like how many liquor licenses and what kind of liquor licenses, like how many a business could own. Uh, It would have like increased the amount of like beer and the hard liquor licenses by like two per business. You know, it was basically like uh, the idea was like... Uh, 
what what in the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not not muted. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like a j- jumbo sized thing of fucking lemon heads. Or it's, it's it's ice. It's ice. And some, I'm uh, I'm uh, stirring. I apologize, Joe. I'm sorry. I didn't know I wasn't muted. That no, was I'm, so I'm actually funny. very sorry for that. That was so loud. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> no, you should. Thank you. No, because I gotta. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Talk about it. Talk about question three, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Mm. So, to the extent that I understand it, question three is basically like, small businesses didn't want to get wiped out by like, so you the bigger businesses box So you would games? have to get like two liquor licenses to sell? No. They already have to get liquor licenses, but they, this it means that they can get more licenses. Like, they... Oh. And, like, the small package companies, Not like, the bad. smaller liquor stores were worried that, like, if they don't get, like, a small increase in the amount that they're allowed to have, that, like, the bigger, like, box stores or whatever, like, yeah. would uh, lobby, like, the state house to, like, just, like, open the floodgates and then allow them to be able to, like, just to overwhelm the smaller companies. Doesn't this also... So heroin. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't this also increase the taxes on liquor... If liquor is only a small percentage of what a store sells, so if it's like a supermarket that also sells liquor, their taxes would be higher. Increase the taxes on. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. There was one group that lobbied against this, which is I don't like. I literally didn't. I did not vote on this because it see it was it seemed so inconsequential. Really, what I saw was that you aren't going to be able to use self checkout to get liquor, and you're going to have to provide. I get changes. The way that you, I, you know, provide identification to obtain liquor, and if somebody wants to like steal a bottle of liquor, <laughs> you know, it'll be easier for them to just fucking, I don't know, use the self checkout and not have to ID themselves. So I was just thinking, like, yeah. well, whatever, you know, if my homie wants to go in and grab a bottle of liquor and fucking make it easier for that guy, that's really the only stake I have in it. Because like, I'm never gonna, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I understand, yeah. Like, I don't think anybody's really going to be hurt, would really be hurt at all yeah. by it. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I voted yes, because it, it, it just seemed, like, confusing, it, but also inconsequential. Clarification. When I said taxes, I meant fines. In lieu of having its liquor license suspended for illegal alcohol sales, a retailer can pay a fine to the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Currently, that fine is equivalent to half of the profits grossed from alcohol sales alone. Thus, the impact on liquor stores is proportionally greater than that on general stores. And as a funny aside, the committee called Food Stores for Consumer Choice that mounted an opposition to this measure reported a total of $12.50 in expenditures. Money well spent, apparently. Where'd you go? What happened? I'm still here. Jesse, where'd you go? What? Oh, you just stopped talking? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I think we agree. It's pretty un- inconsequential. I mean, again, I didn't vote on it. Yeah, that's the message that I want you to take cr- away from this episode is just don't vote. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's kind of I mean, not I worth did, it. I mean, I did vote. I voted yes on all the other questions. I'm I just kidding, left that one. I feel like I have less information now than I did before. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's curious. Impressive. No, like, you're right. Is that I felt like I had more of an understanding of the questions. And then, like, they're like, this is what this question was. And I was like, oh, that's, oh, okay. <clears throat> interesting. I think this was kind of an attempt to get ahead of some other legislation that's going to. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was saying. Yeah, this is, this is almost like a fill in the gap kind of a thing. Because there's going to be other legislation that it addresses liquor licensing in the state. Well, fuck you, folks. What do we care? Let's talk about question four. The last question on the ballot for Massachusetts was question four, which was about uh, removing citizenship requirements for driver's licenses, and it would allow people who can't verify citizenship or immigration status to submit alternative IDs in order to apply for a driver's license. And that passed 53% to 46%. Hell yeah. I mean, like, it's actually very, very positive to see that question one and four passed, but, like, they really were squeakers. They squeaked them out. Yeah, they it's, it's, it's upsetting to see. Uh, it's upsetting to see <laughs> that this the 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 state is 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 riven in two between a, a conservative mindset 
and the more progressive mindset and they bleed into each other sometimes and it's just you wish massachusetts actually was like the liberal bastion that people say it is that nah. because it's really not no it's not exactly it's nothing state sucks dick and balls dick's balls and ass yeah it does though it fucking does and what happened nationally no it's okay i i don't want to talk that much shit about massachusetts it's yeah it's fine it's better than most you can get better public health care here than you can in the south so that's hmm. one point for massachusetts put one on the board put it on the board it's on the you board get, right there. you can get an abortion you can get a public abortion you can, get you, can get a, you can get a portion <laughs> and you can make everyone, you can force everyone to watch in this state. Jesus Christ. Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Wet ass P word. Uh, make everyone watch it. So nationally, the Democrats have picked up a seat in the Senate uh, that John Fetterman was able to beat Dr. Oz by like three points. Killed and, Dr. Oz. Shrek uh, won. The day Georgia's Senate Dr. race Fetterman has gone to a runoff. Oz. And, yes, he uh, killed Lord Farquaad. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, John Fetterman killed Oz. I know, but it was a fucking trick. I know, I know. Sorry, dude, suck my nuts. And uh, Arizona and Nevada are still taking fucking forever to count their ballots. So what's the runoff, Georgia? Yeah, Georgia's going to a runoff in December because neither candidate got 50%. Hmm. And in the House, so far, the Democrats have suffered a net loss of only eight seats, which is actually, like, really far below the average. Uh, there's still, like, 45-ish seats left to be uh Wait, called. when you say below the average, do you mean that, like... The party that controls the White House in a midterm yes. election, on average, loses about, like, 33 seats in the House. That's Jesus really Christ. funny. That shows how incompetent our political yeah. system is. Like, yeah. if as a general rule, yeah, the, the party that has the executive branch just de facto loses seats like crazy in the house. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking insane. And you know what's also insane is how long this this trend has been going on for. This is a trend that has only been broken like twice since the Civil War. It's all, you know, just blinking, man. That's insane, dude. Like that, yeah, no, it kind of shows that, like, maybe the system was, like, purposely built to uh, be uh, incredibly... Unstable? Yeah. And just, you know, incapable of getting anything done, really. In most countries, the incumbent party is the powerful party. In the United States, the incumbent party is just the most visibly incompetent. (laughs) Yep. Well, it's because the, the Senate actually has... The ability to prevent anything from happening. Yeah, man. They did pick up one one seat in the Senate, didn't they? Yes, they have. But, like, it's still possible that they could lose at least one or two of them. Like, the three states that are left to be called are all seats that, like, the Democrats currently hold. Hmm. So the last three seats that are in play that haven't been called yet are all seats the Democrats have to defend. So they need to win at least one of the three seats to be able to uh, control the Senate. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, because the filibuster makes a a slim majority or slim minority irrelevant, especially with Joe Manchin fucking around the way he does. Well, they'll just find a new rotating villain because Manchin will be up for re-election in 2024. So they'll find someone who's like not up for a re-election next cycle to be like the the rotating villain. Fucking what's your face? Kirsten Sinema is not up for re-election for like another several years so she'll probably be like the new like joe mansion for like a couple of years yeah no shit yeah she already is she already is joe mansion yeah she already became joe mansion she already yeah yeah so like okay, man. did but, we even uh, get into what's happening in the rest of the country yes no? oh yeah we did <laughs> we're, we're getting we're georgia doing. that's what we're doing uh there were like a lot of ballot questions though yeah they usually are yeah, there are 50 states, in fact. Yeah, so many, goddamn. I mean, they could all have hundreds of questions if they wanted to. Yeah. So many goddamn questions, dude. Go through every single one. Yeah. So there were, like, a number of, like, marijuana questions. A number of marijuana? What, like, are you chill with marijuana? You like it, bro? You Are you cool? Is that what the ballot said? Do you want to get fucking baked, dude? Joe, let me, let me show you my collection of stamps. <laughs> okay, and what about these marijuana questions? Keep going. Dabs or flower? That's the part of the partisan <laughs> uh, divide. So, <laughs> in uh, Maryland, uh, Maryland legalized marijuana. I'm not uh, a dab guy. I'll say that out loud. Missouri legalized marijuana, but uh, North Dakota and uh, Arkansas didn't. 
Uh, currently, they're, they're still counting the votes in Colorado for a ballot question known as Prop 122 that would decriminalize and regulate certain psychedelics. Oh, shit. Cool. Right now, yes, on Prop 122, which would decriminalize and regulate psychedelics, is leading 51% to 48%. Mm. So so that would decriminalize like psychedelic drugs for people over 21. Mm. And uh, both Dakotas and Arkansas voted down proposals to uh, legalize marijuana. So they ain't getting it? My Dakotas ain't getting no weed? <laughs> uh, disappointment. Sorry, Dakotas. Meanwhile, California, Michigan, and Vermont voted to enshrine uh, abortion rights into their state constitutions. Good, good. Well, Florida and Ohio voted to uh, add abortion restrictions. Ooh, hiss. Wait. Fuck you. Yeah. So there's that. That's bad. That's really bad. Yeah. And uh, there are a couple states like uh, Kansas, Kentucky, and uh, North Carolina voted down abortion bans on the ballot. So Yeah, Kansas. Everybody wants to get a fucking abortion. That's what I'm yeah, taking away. That Kansas vote, was that... Um... I support people in this, right? Was that yesterday or was that the during the primary? Kansas was like during the spring. Yeah, okay. But actually, no, it, it was right after the road decision in June. Yeah. And then Nevada has a ballot question that's currently leading that would uh, institute like open primaries and implement ranked choice voting with the open primary system that the like, California uses, where like all candidates are on the ballot and then whoever the two candidates with like the most votes go to the general election. That's good. Ranked choice voting is objectively better. Yeah. I looked at the fucking like the ballot questions from like, I don't know what year it was, but when they voted down ranked choice voting and I was like, Oh, that was last cycle. Yeah. That's embarrassing. And like, when you look at like who voted for question one, like a lot of the wealthier parts of the state actually voted for it. And a lot of the old like labor parts like voted against it. It's really weird. Yeah. That is really weird. We live in a very fucking weird state. Because folks. they're they're all temporarily uh, embarrassed millionaires. Yeah, weird. It is pretty weird. Any states uh, vote to ban slavery? But I choose. Yeah, Tennessee, which I think <laughs> but is. I well, I mean, I guess that's technically relevant because technically there's an exemption in the Thirteenth Amendment that allows states to use. People who are incarcerated as uh, prison laborers, so. Yeah, that was what was annoying about all these people, like, dunking on that and being like, well, finally. It's like, dude, like, they actually use prison labor to, like, make your food and shit. Like, there's a lot of prison labor that goes into, like, a lot of things. A lot of, like, domestic product. Like, there's a lot of prison labor used in it, so. Yeah. Something to consider. <laughs> That's technically slavery. Like, really a lot. Especially in Florida. It's surprising how many of the... Insta well, Whole Foods makes its cheese in Florida through prison labor. You can quote me on that. It is true. Yeah, I was going to say progressive institutions speaking about. Uh, oh, yeah. And I just blew the. No, no. Well, corp like, I don't know how many people think. You're, you're thinking about it and fucking... I just tweeted it right out. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what liberals think about anything. So, yeah, I don't know. That's the thing is like. What a liberal think about prison labor as in like, well, at least they're like getting things to do. And they do are, they are technically paid like, f like, like 40 cents a day. It's like 40 cents an hour, at least. Yeah. It's something like that. It's like, they're only paid like two days, two, two bucks a day or whatever, some bullshit like that. Like, and like, there's a part of me that thinks like a liberal would be like, oh, that's fine. Like, you know, like at least they're giving them something to do and they're being uh financially compensated for it. And it's like, dude, like. What? Like, we banned all this shit. There was a war about this. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Hillary Clinton had slaves. Yes. So. Wait, what? Yeah, Yeah, because when Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas, the uh, the people who, like, waited on them, like, were, like, the butlers or whatever the fuck at the governor's mansion were prison laborers. Oh. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't know that. What? That seems like something you would have known. I don't know. I'm sorry. Not to be conspiratorial or, or accuse you of such. But no, it's it's... Like, it's shit like that that makes, like, the all those, like, Clinton conspiracies feel like, okay, there's, like, a little bit of, like, legitimacy here, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just that, like, that's just what all rich people are like, though, you know? Yeah, and so, like, the more believable parts of, like, the conspiracy theories where it's just, like, there's just, like, wrote rich people that do fucked up rich people shit, like, makes sense. You know, like, I assume, like, other rich people have people killed all the time, you know? <laughs> Why not, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So anyways, this is actually probably a good time to say this. 
So last week, Drew's not with us in this week, but last week he he uh he has a cold or whatever. Flu. Yeah, he's we poor Drew. We send him our love and we hope he gets better soon. Yes, because if he's sick, then likely so am I. <laughs> yes, we're not going to get into that at all. You can take I f- whatever I you can him. assume whatever you want from that statement. <laughs> I'm kidding, but um. I think I actually cut it out of the episode, but he did say that in in the next episode we would get into Colombia as a client. Colum Colombia. Colombia. Not Colombia. It's Colombia with an O as a client <laughs> state. As a client state, and uh, and I said how the United States has done a lot of damage by propping up drug lords in the global South. Yeah. Colombia true. is a prime example of that. The Colombian government is has. Until very recently, through the aid, quote unquote, aid of the United States, um, it's military aid. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that the only kind of aid. aid we give most countries. Yeah, with the uh, the tender, loving care of the <laughs> United States. Uh, yep. The uh, Colombian government has basically been an extension of the drug trade. You know, there are paramilitaries and also FARC and the ELN are also they sit i mean they grow and sell coca because that's how you make a fucking living uh but i mean the problem through and through is that the united states has a huge demand for cocaine and um yes intelligence agencies such as the cia have been uh pretty intimately intertwined with that shit get into this country cheap yeah with the strong-fisted administrations that lord over the peasantry in these countries and basically use the united states military and their positions of power to they'll like destroy the crops of peasant farmers so that they can have a monopoly on the cocaine trade and it's only in this very very recently that colombia has made a hard left turn and started to break away from the united states well, isn't the reason they killed like Escobar is because like he bailed out the country or whatever? I don't know. Because like he was like he was partially working with the CIA. I don't know. There's a bunch of fucking like Netflix shows I should have watched. I don't know. Whatever. I would t- I would take Netflix shows about Pablo Escobar the Grand. No, you should, no, no. They're but, the uh... only believable source. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's a lot of like. I mean, listen to again. Listen to the Contragate narration that I did, parts one and two. This is basically taken out of the playbook that the CIA used in Laos and Nicaragua. It's just that the uh, Sandinistas regained power in, I think, 2006. Yeah. So this has just been like, like, this is Colombia's track, is it took until now to break away from basically a U.S.-backed military dictatorship. And that comes in part with uh, essentially a peace treaty with FARC. Um, the the United States has finally officially taken FARC off of its what is it, like terrorist. Yeah, the the, the what's yeah, FARC stand for? Uh, it's a fun name. But uh, the list you're talking about is the uh, list of like state sponsors of terrorism. Hmm. I mean, FARC it it stands for the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. Okay. But obviously, that acronym would be RAFC. <laughs> so it's oh, it's for the C. Okay. Like it's in Spanish. You know? Yeah, yeah, I see now. Okay, cool. I like what it. is that in Spanish? I should, I, I feel like that's something that I should know. What does FARC stand for? Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia. That's what it means, folks. Very cool. They were developed as the military wing of the Colombian Communist Party in 1964. Damn, wish you had that shit in this country. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? I don't know. What would the CIA even do in that case? I don't know, jerk themselves off. Who cares? I mean, they can't. You can't invade your own country, can you? <laughs> I mean, you could, yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Like, they would have to, they I would guess have to we call would solve the, the CIA. And, like, I don't know. We give them jobs at the dick sucking factory. Who cares? I guess that's what fascism is, is when you turn the mechanisms of imperialism inward. Speaking of these elections, the word of the day on the dictionary app. You know what it is, folks? What? It's Chode. fucking democracy. Oh, that was close. What did you say? Showed. Yeah. The same thing. <laughs> Motherfucking <laughs> democracy. Joe, are you done with the stupid elections? 
Yeah. No. Okay. No and yeah, which who do I believe? Whomst do I believe? Well, you know what? It's not a question anymore, because we have so goddamn good at this. We have a fucking man with a divining rod here to bring us the truth. Comedy is legalized. Elon Musk has now bought Twitter. He's owned it for a week. And, um... Diamond Daddy. It's, uh, yeah, it's, like, no different or more terrible than it's ever been. You know, at least not so far. Uh, all these ideas that he has with, like, it's gonna be $8 and, like, we're gonna rank the people, like, with the check marks, like, higher than anyone else. It's, like, that means that everybody's just gonna stop people, like, following people with check marks. And they're all just gonna follow each other. Unless it literally becomes, like, like behind a paywall, like he says, like, unless that happens, like, there's so many easy ways to get around the bullshit that he wants to implement. And the thing is, like, people who are, like running away from Twitter right now and, like, quitting Twitter. It's the thing that, like, I like all politics have become. Chasing phantoms and, like, making up a guy in your mind and getting mad about it, which is, like, basically Twitter. I see all these people who are, like, leaving Twitter for, like, Mastodon, and they're like, like, it's worse than it's ever been and stuff, and it's like, it's really not, dude. Like, that's all, you're making that up. Like, you, like, Jesus Christ, like, half of the ideas that Elon had initially, he's already gone back on. And so, like, I don't take any of the bullshit that he's trying to do seriously. I think he's going to relent on all of his bullshit. Like, he's going to Im- implement everything for a short time, sure. But I think what's going to happen is going to drive away so many fucking people through these, and I mean fucking advertisers, I through mean, these unconventional. But no, what I think he's going to do is he's going to keep doing that through all these unconventional means. He's going to alien himself to the point where he's either going to have to, like, sell the website again, like, sell the website to someone else, not again, or he's going to have to, like, fucking, like, Belt away all that bullshit and just have Twitter as it was and then just let, let all, everybody back on as it was and be like, yeah, fine. Like, you can do what you want. I, I understand why it was the way it was. Because, like, like, Twitter sucks. It always has and always will because it's a fucking open forum where everybody can say anything they want. Again, it is the type of place where, like, you say, like, I like this. And so, like, a million people are like, oh, so you must hate. And then it's something, like, completely unrelated. Like, it is this weird goddamn place, but it's, like, it's a pretty great place at the same time. There's a lot of play you can connect with people and stuff. But at the same time, if you're trying to use like a social media site for like organizing, uh, like you're doing it wrong. You should like be you should be doing it through like encrypted chats and through like face to face contact with people and get offline uh, so much and sit with your th- yourself and your own thoughts and stuff. But like, you know, it's still a good place where like if you want to go and bullshit with, like, a bunch of anonymous people online, like, it's a good place to do that. And, like, I think it's a good thing to have, you know. And Elon Musk is basically, it's all the fucking, it's like the Onion article where it's like, please like me. It's like, that's all it is. You know, his wife fucking left him. <laughs> and, and like, like fucked uh, Chelsea Manning. And then his daughter doesn't want anything to do with him. And, and like, he, his only vestige of any sort of, like, genuine companionship i think in his mind is fucking twitter and now that he's bought it he sees that like oh fuck i've basically he's basically alienated himself from the entire business world and he's gonna like further do that because like joe like you were talking about like the problems that tesla's having like i didn't like go into that what the fuck is that about (laughs) so his whole like acquisition of twitter it's just gets more hilarious the more you dig into it like the financial side of it like, it's just so fucking funny because there's just so many yeah. layers to it. Because everything that he's been doing, like, I'm going to, like, go, like, backwards a bit. Like, start from, like, the most recent shit. Because, like, the thing about, like, the $8 is really funny. Because initially he wanted to do $20. And then, like, Stephen King whined about it for, like, yeah, but- like made one post. And he goes, how about 8 <laughs> For me, I always took it that, like, the $20 was always a bullshit sell, that, like, you always do that initially, and then the $8 is, like, the supposed deal that he's giving you, because it was going to be $20, but really, he was always going to charge you $8. No, I feel like he's, like, genuinely begging. Yeah, but it's a fucking, G- that's a fucking huckster's thing, and what the fuck is Elon Musk? That's, like, what they do. Yeah, I'm just saying, it's a huckster's tactic. He makes great deals. But he's being sued about... Another tweet he made a couple years ago about, like, how he said he was going to, you know, take Tesla private. Uh, He's being sued about that because he said that he wanted to take Twitter private on Twitter, which is, like, market manipulation. So he's being sued about that. He's being... (laughs) He's so stupid. Shannon Liz Reardon, who ran for uh, AG in Massachusetts, she's agreed to take on uh, a class action lawsuit to represent 
uh, workers from Twitter who have been uh, illegally fired. Some of whom were called back up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the entire infa- yeah because the entire infrastructure <laughs> fucking team was fired. And they're, they're like, like hey, oh, can you come back, please? Yeah. Oh, you're the people that we actually need to keep this fucking site operating for more than five hours. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> so Shannon Liz Reardon is representing a class action lawsuit against Musk because large companies. They legally are not allowed to engage in mass firings without at least giving workers like a two months notice, you know, that they're going to start laying people off. Yeah. And he gave them, he gave half the people. He gave Twitter, them like, like a six hour notice. He gave them like maybe half a weekend at most when you're supposed to give yeah. two months. And so he's being sued about that. Uh, and also the <laughs> advertisers are... Uh, <laughs> so funny dude the advertisers are abandoning the uh the site on mass because they're all like terrified of like how their brand would be perceived given that uh severely weakened content moderation which is really funny because musk yeah, laid dude. off three quarters of the content moderators yeah, exactly. which is the reason yeah. why the advertisers <laughs> are fleeing twitter and elon yeah, musk uh, is getting demonetized but he laid free off the, speech uh, can't even do it in in America, the greatest freest country on the earth. He laid off yeah. all these people because <laughs> the way that Musk financed his takeover bit of Twitter was so heavily dependent on debt. Sucking his own dick. Twitter has now been forced to take no. on so much debt that in order to be able to pay the creditors, right. Twitter now has to find an additional billion dollars of revenue like under the couch cushions. But all of the things that Elon Musk has done is basically like alienated like almost all of the primary funding like revenue sources for twitter when he needs to find an additional billion dollars on top of like the pre-takeover revenue levels the revenue levels that twitter was making before they got bought out and on top of that he uh almost got like ousted from tesla about a month month and a half ago because he had to approach uh, a bunch of hedge, fund- hedge funds to get the the funding that he needed to be able to buy the company and take it private. So what happened is he used his ownership stake at Tesla as collateral against the money he was getting from these hedge funds. And that, that sound- had the effect of <laughs> over leveraging Tesla, <laughs> which meant that basically the company's financial stability was an immediate risk. And yeah, his obviously. board of directors almost voted him out of the company over this. <laughs> also, he can idiot. buy a website yeah. that immediately He's starts tanking. He's an idiot. Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> Look, you genuinely can't, like... I don't understand. I, you can't, yeah, you can't so conceptualize much, him. He has so many resources at his fingertips and he just fucking ignores everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like, you can't conceptualize him oh as anything God, other dude. than an idiot now. Like, he's just, like, showing his ass completely. Elon Musk, he's known as this, like, ideas guy. Like, he's the thinker. But, like, because he's not an engineer, <laughs> all of his ideas are fucking horrible. <laughs> like, they're, yeah. they're unimplementable. Yeah, pretty much. And the, the funny it's thing is, is that baby. right now, because of the fact that uh, he took the company private, which means that, like, the company now owns, like, all basically all the voting shares, Musk is no longer, like, no longer has to uh, answer to, like, shareholders. He no longer has to be held accountable. And because he fired, like the CEO and like all of the other like C-suite executives. He's basically the only person like in charge right now. Apparently most <laughs> most of the people that are left to Twitter, like at the upper levels, their job is basically trying to get like Elon to stop doing stupid things. That's what their job is basically devolved into. No, yeah, somebody tweeted like that he's like walking around the halls like talking to himself about <laughs> ideas that he's going to <laughs> implement on like through Twitter. Like, he's, like, thinking about, like, hooking up people's, like, bank accounts to their Twitter accounts, and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He fired, like, half of the infrastructure people and three-quarters of the content <laughs> moderators, but he wants people to connect their bank accounts to Twitter, even though the site is yeah. less safe than, like, ever before. And he's walking around the halls of the fucking complex talking to himself. This is proof. It's so funny. <laughs> this is proof that it's objectively destructive to just... Tell somebody, even if their idea is stupid, to be like, yeah, that sounds smart, dude. You should pursue that. <laughs> when it reaches this level, like when you've never had anybody your whole life tell you like, nah, man, that's dumb. Or you fire everybody that tells you your shit's stupid. Like that's basically what he's done. Yeah. 
it's wild how this is the true idiocracy again yeah. with all of he's, the critiques yeah, we have of that movie like this is very <laughs> much he's in ushering the flesh. it in yeah. yeah we love it folks like judge we love it folks uh i believe it yeah he's just, no but it's like like the first tweet of him like oh comedy's legal and then like now it's like point 74 like like new rule and implementing all this shit like basically what he's gonna do is he's gonna repeal everything and it's gonna be stupid and then he's gonna put everything back and he's gonna be like oh shit that was stupid that was a poison chalice <laughs> repeal be and replace <laughs> yeah, pretty much. with the same exact thing yeah it's over yeah it's just it's over folks it's just really funny it's like i don't know if it's just me but like it the thought occurred to me like doesn't like allowing everyone to just buy like their, like the blue check mark defeat the purpose of the blue check mark? Yeah, exactly. The point of the blue check mark does that. Well, I would say because, no. Because like the blue check mark, it's about at, verification. eight dollars a month a- at most will only generate like four million dollars of revenue a year, not the billion they need. It doesn't even achieve that. When we talk about meritocracy, if the merit is like a college degree, that takes money. You know what I mean? If the merit is social connections and business acumen, that is the verification. You know, it's got it, baby. Because it's like if you're a journalist for like Liberation News, you're not going to get a blue check. But if you're like a yeah. New York Times dipshit, even if you yeah. do like one op ed, you're going to get a blue check. Yeah, no, exactly. That's like, like the whole the blue check mark. Yes, it, like it does favor like. I don't know, like, like, our money. Well. It favors capital. Uh, it, it does. No, but it is. It's meant more for verification to know that, like, the source is like who they actually say they are, and like, there's a lot of people who are par- like, so it like it has some reason beyond just like being like a fucking like flashy thing to say, like, hey, look, or like having more features. But I do understand that you do have more features already. I don't know. Well, it's bullshit. In the, it's in the same Musk. vein talking about this guy all the time man politicians ghostwrite op-eds all the time yeah they do and they get their dick sucked by somebody you know and then they and then and then, and then that person just as a general statement yeah just as probably. a general course of action they <laughs> force somebody to suck their dick probably yeah and then they get sold and then they get and then they get uh they get uh me too later and then they can become like a columnist yeah that's true you know? They can talk about guy? how they Mark got canceled. Halper, whatever. Cancel culture is good. Maybe they're, maybe they're doing it right now. Maybe they're getting their dick sucked right Everybody now. Everybody should get canceled at least once. Yeah. Prepare for a pride obliterating bitch slap. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you need, baby. And also, Lula won his election. Ooh. Yes. Bolsonaro, uh, he, he didn't concede, but he accepted the results, and he, but he didn't congratulate Lula. So Bolsonaro went out like a bitch, like literally. So, you know. I honestly had higher expectations for that guy. Like his politics were absolutely fucking abysmal. I mean, this is the guy that said yeah, if his son like, was gay, he hopes his son would get hit by a car. No, but that's the thing. It's like these but, guys. But he also did get shot on the campaign trail. And then took a picture in his hospital bed with the thumbs up. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Bolsonaro? Yeah. yeah. Or no, he got stabbed. Yeah, he got stabbed. Yeah, he got he got stabbed. He got his fucking <laughs> fingers cut off. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, so did, like, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what? What about Teddy Roosevelt? He actually hunted fucking deer. He got... <laughs> Yeah, there was an assassination attempt on him in, uh, when he was running for president in 1912. He got shot in the chest, dude. He got shot in the dick. It, and he continued his speech. Well, <laughs> oh my god, what a that's badass. That's a fucking alpha move, dude. No, it's because yeah, dude. His, uh, he had his speech folded like 20 times in his in his shirt pocket. And he, it was so times, thick though. that it actually stopped the bullet. So his dick is so Partially. Thick, he still, the bullets still penetrate. Like, he still had a gunshot wound. Yeah, but it muffled some of it. Yeah. So well, we got I'm up and he just kept talking. My speech is twenty. Still times. pretty alpha though. Like, yeah, no, they, 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 they're so rad. Can you imagine in present day, fucking someone doing that? Imagine, imagine like Tim Ryan going up to the podium and getting <laughs> fucking shot. Yeah, no, imagine shot. Laura Healy doing that. <laughs> shot in the her chest. acceptance speech. It's like someone <laughs> runs up to her with a fucking like sawed off and then shoots. And she's just and then like, she gets up. Nah, and I like, got it. Right. I got it. Don't worry. Sorry for the delay. Yeah. Sorry for the mess. We're going to push through. Well, anyways, in defeat, Lula. Well, no, in, sorry. In defeat, Bolsonaro is a bitch. And Lula is not. We're very happy to see her. We love to see her. It's very good. Very positive sorry. development. I had a cough coming. Sorry. I really hope the work the Workers' Party doesn't fold into the middle 
because they kind of had to in order to to what you know form a coalition yeah to protect lula from you know operation car wash v2 but yeah yeah i don't know man it's good it's objectively good that he won the election and it is rare like i said for an incumbent to in brazil i don't think it's happened in the last half century no it's never happened before it's never happened at all there we go see bolsonaro Joe. is the first sitting brazilian president to lose re-election we're not like a total bitch jesus <laughs> no really like he, sorry, he's fallen bro. so far yeah dude he got covid like 20 times <laughs> apparently, he got his, <laughs> apparently he got his fingers <laughs> cut <laughs> off i mean Mad he went through so much shit and then he <laughs> lost and then like he just fucking leaves in the middle bitch. of the night yeah, yeah. Oh, what a bitch. slinks away I thought, like, no, and that's the thing. It's like I thought you guys were like fucking like the like these idiots were like the fucking like 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 image of masculinity. And I will admit, uh, getting your fingers cut off and still being like, hey, 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 hey. like that's cool. I'll give him that. But like, you're not even gracious in defeat. Like, dude, like, where's your actual like masculinity? Like being like a, like being respectful to other people and like bowing out when you know that you're defeated and like knowing that like you've been bested and and like your know, limits. Dude. That's masculinity, motherfucker. It's hard to be masculine when you really have to take a shit. <laughs> Does he con? Did he? Is that a, is that like a terminal condition? Is it like constantly? No, it's because shit? at one point he got taken to the hospital because he got so constipated, like he couldn't shit. No, it happened twice. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh. I forgot about the second time. Man, what's your diet consistent of, bro? It's awful. He drinks the blood of his. Uh, yeah, he had like an impacted bowel. The sacrifices at the yeah. altar of neoliberalism. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, neoliberalism. It makes you so constipated that you can't shit. Yes. Do you think they've ever had any other like that was a cover for something else? Like you think it was like he couldn't come or whatever? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like imagine if that was a major crisis for a politician. Like oh no. Because I feel like, you know, like if that was a cover, they would have picked a better news. one than the guy breaking he has, news. can't take a shit. Like that's that that can't be like your first line cover <laughs> for another medical ailment. Breaking news. I don't know. Maybe in Brazil, that's less funny. Breaking news. The president cannot come. <laughs> the president has been seen wandering the streets in a daze. Thousand yard stare, hard cock in hard the as a rock. <laughs> hard cock in his underwear. He's blabbling to himself. No Tidy whiteys, no less. Oh god. <laughs> the old saggy ass. Oh god. Do he pauses and looks to the heavens. What will we do about this break? He can't come. His wife has been trying all night. The first lady has been trying all night. Oh, fuck. God damn it. They're gonna have to call him his mistress. Anyways, that's a great way to place to start, to end, to start. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great place to all start, right. too. The let's, president let's, can't let's, come. Let's What's dive the, into it. <laughs> let's, let's find out why the president can't come this week. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I think Joe Biden is pretty old. Just think about Joe. Joe. Yes. Our Joe. He probably comes, I want you to, th probably comes I want you like to think about shavings. Joe Biden coming. How much, what, like, the consistency. He, it's, it's like dry <laughs> coconut. Yeah, it's very <laughs> awful. Jesus, I don't want to think about this. Oh, All right. Fuck. Then why did you bring it up? Because I wanted you to think about it. Oh, yeah, That's I'm not why. going there. <sighs> My not name is Scott. not brave enough to do that. <laughs> I got it. Jackass. Jackass. Hey, the mother. Anyways, yeah, so my name is Scott. You can find me on the internet at Sweaty Wife. The various social medias that you use. Twitter for as long as it lasts. I'm going down with that motherfucking ship. Motherfucking ship. Instagram, Letterboxd. You can find me on uh, other social medias that I shouldn't say, but you can find me there. <laughs> Joe, what do you know? Well, What's I know that I'm for? Joe. You can find That's me on... That's a good thing to know. Yeah, it's usually useful. Self-awareness. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JLFB96. And uh, Jesse, where can people find you on the And interwebs? he's Jesse. And I'm Jesse. And Jesus, you can man. find my music on soundcloud.com slash contingents Boston, C-O-N-T-I-N-G-E-N-C-E, Boston. Carlene just like slammed the toilet lid. <laughs>
Oh, no. I did just post a new song. It is called Weapons of Class Dysfunction. And yes, that is a bad pun. Uh, We love it. I like it. I put a lot of work into it. I really haven't been paying attention to shit at all other than that. So yeah, go listen to that. What are your inspirations? My inspirations? Depression and the band Lower Definition are probably the two biggest. Oh, okay. And I do have a slam recommendation this evening. No slam recommendation is... Oh, shit, it's so punishing. Wait, fuck. <laughs> Hold on, I forget which album it was. Remember when Cannibal Corpse was in Ace and Tora? No? Okay. Sorry I brought it up. It's okay. No. When did that happen? Your... Well, the movie came out in the 90s, so... Slam the recommendation 90s. is... An album entitled... Precognition to Eradicate. I'm say precon. Precon. Where are they from? They are from Turkey. Oh, yeah. The band is Cenotaph. There are so many bands called Cenotaph. This is the only band called Cenotaph on the Encyclopedia Metallum. Oh, listed as the genre brutal death metal. Everything else is just regular death From metal. From Turkey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you trying to say? There's no such thing as Turkish brutal death metal? No, I'm just. It's, it's are interesting. Are you fucking that they... racist? No. <laughs> I just find it very interesting that, like, would you say there's more? Of that genre, of, like of bands from Turkey, it's just interesting that they're the one that singled out. I don't know. Um, I can actually do an advanced search right now. And I hope the fucking genre spreads, motherfuckers, in every country or wherever anyone wants it. Yeah, there are. 24 bands on the Encyclopedia Metallum, more or less, in the brutal death metal genre. And Cenotaph has been around for a long time. Like, I think they're coming up on like 30 years. Jesus Christ. Yeah. At that point, is like the vocalist, like, is there like vocal cords are completely done. Like, have you heard Phil on Sound No Talk now? It's just like... Like, uh, like it's, it's like the vocal cords are completely done. It depends on how you do your vocals. Um, I would get into it more, but it's the end of the episode. Yeah, so no, I don't want to drag it out, but there are techniques that you can use so that you don't fuck... It. I mean, that's why Skrillex ended up as Skrillex, because he got, like, vocal... He got, like, polyps on his vocal cords from screaming like a bitch when he was in from first to last instead of like learning how to do his vocals properly so that yeah ended his career as like emo guy <laughs> and kind of inadvertently started his career as I don't know, uh, uh the king of dubstep dubstep troll yeah no the king the king i troll. say he's a, he's a goddamn like, dude, troll he's a troll Here's the thing about, like, Skrillex and, like, all that music about, like, that shit. I listened to a lot of, like, dubstep and shit, and I cannot remember how any of it sounds now. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I don't, like, I know there's, like, a wobble thing to it, and there's, like, the drop, but, like, everything else, I'm just, like, it's just, like, I can't, like, recall a single Skrillex song. It's all fucking, it's vapor. The only dubstep I can remember is Excision. I don't know what the fuck that is. He's like this really hairy Canadian guy. <laughs> nice. Well, I love him. I hope he's. I hope he's. I hope he's happy in his life. Anyway. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. You can find us on Patreon and Twitter and Instagram at Epic and Credulity. Facebook. We're on YouTube. A lot of people actually, or not. There's a decent amount of people that actually listen to us on mm-hmm. YouTube, which I find it cool. Thank you guys. If you're listening on YouTube right now, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Do like fucking i don't know comment or something some people have commented before. i don't i don't if you exist 
Make us Let aware us of your existence. <laughs> yeah, even if you're fucking like, if you're on, like, you follow us on like Facebook or whatever, just let us know. If Anyways. you're just looking at the graphic that we chose as our our episode artwork, and you've been jerking off this entire time to that picture, God, I hope not. Please take your free hand and click on that little <laughs> comment button. Type mm -hmm. something out with your free hand, and then just uh, go back to jerking it. Put the exact timestamp in which you busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. If you're gonna watch us on or listen to us or whatever the fuck on YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, that Andor. <laughs> fuck, I gotta go to sleep soon and I gotta watch that fucking episode of Andor. So yeah, that's Maybe. the episode. That's the repock. We love you. If you're jerking off to us on YouTube, we love you. <laughs> Follow us. We say but tank do. But tank do. But tank dicks. Anyways, yeah. Good night. <laughs> that's the epoch. I'm actually getting tired too, so. <laughs> Can I get a dolphin sound? Uh, I believe I have a dolphin. Let me find that thing. Where are my animals? Oh, uh, yeah. Give me a dolphin. Oh. Um... <laughs> it's pretty good. What is...